Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and of course more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Behind me is the beginning research center, the starting point of Area Zero, and this is where you're going to find all of your new Paradox Pokemon in this generation. Of course, depending on what version you're playing, different Pokemon will show up. The ancient style Pokemon from Scarlet, the futuristic Pokemon style in Violet. To access the great crater of Paldea and Area Zero though, you will need to have completed the game and its main story. So if you're trying to avoid any spoilers, in regards to this area, I would recommend you don't watch this video, but if you're looking to find your specific iron Pokemon or specific Scarlet type, this is where you're going to find them in the end game. By entering this initial starting point, much like you did as you were going through the story, you're going to now have unlocked the teleporter, which will take you to all four research centers. Depending on which one you go to, you're going to find the different Pokemon, but because there is no map when you're down there, it can be a bit more convoluted and difficult to work your way around. As this is a guide to the violet version and the iron types, that's what I'll be focusing on, but you can find their opposites in Scarlet version in the same places. So, for example, if we go to Research Center 1 and we're in the sort of grassy higher up area of the crater, you're going to very easily find your first two, Iron Bundle and of course, Iron Hands right here, immediately from the moment you leave the station. Also in this area though, just behind them, it's going to be the third Iron type. So by simply coming down from the station, eventually one will spawn, just like we've seen here. The Iron Moth is also in this section, so you can easily get three of the seven pretty quick. From here, I recommend you return to the research center so you can use the teleporter, and I'm going to show you where to go next, which is going to be a bit more secretive, a little bit harder to find. Before we go back into the research center for the teleport, though, you want to turn and look upwards and see this big sort of dirt ramp. We're going to climb up this, and as you can see, immediately upon climbing it, we found another Pokemon. We found Iron Thorns here. So this is another location where you can find your Paradox specific types. Upon returning to a research center, you'll find the teleporter in the corner here, and you want to teleport to research station number three. As you leave that station, you'll be looking down into the tunnel, which will take you underground. But the secret area where you're gonna find the, basically the strongest new Paradox Pokemon is actually over here to the left. Simply hug the left wall and go in a straight line past that tunnel and ignoring it. We'll come under this archway, and as we do, we'll begin to look left, and suddenly where these rocks are is a surprisingly hidden cave, which will progress through. By progressing through that cave, you will eventually come to this open area in the underground and there'll be this massive waterfall. This is where we're going to find Iron Valiant. And if you're playing Scarlet, this is where you would find your Roaring Moon. Thankfully, it's also another Pokemon's location, Iron Jugulus, another great place to find it. To find your Iron Valiant, or if you're playing the, up oh, there we go, the other version with Roaring Moon, you'll need to circle the area basically, until one appears in front of you, just like that one did for me. And it doesn't take much. Have a look at that Douglet, Douglet over there. As you can see, I've just walked out of range of it. I walk back in and it's gone. And as I go over into this area, a potential new Pokemon will spawn like an Iron Jugulus or like this Sableye here. By going out of range of that Iron Valiant, I can go back over here and we can reset these Pokemon. Pokemon. And you just go back and forth until you see the Pokemon you desire. Once you've got your Pokemon, I would recommend you teleport to the starting point once again, the zero gate, because it's a lot easier to do that, then re-enter and then use the teleporter, then manually running all the way back out of that cave. In any case, our next set of Pokemon will begin at research station number three again, so just head there. From here, we'll actually go into the cave this time. It will not take long for you to encounter them. I barely even stepped in and we bumped into Iron Treads, which yes, you can find this Paradox Pokemon earlier in the game. In the Acido Desert, once you defeat the Titan here, it will begin spawning in basically the same spot. But if you haven't captured it yet, you can get it here in this Area Zero. An interesting detail that I'd like to include in this guide though, is the fact that you can get both the Scarlet and Violet versions in your game and capture them yourself, no problem. What it requires is multiplayer, so online play, with another player who has the other version. So say I am playing in Violet, which I am, and I'm running around in this area while in multiplayer with someone who is actively currently playing on Scarlet. Basically, the Pokemon of that version will just spawn in front of me, as if I'm playing in that version. Simply being online with the other version, with a player with the other version, will cause them to have a spawn chance. So in the area where I'm 
circling around trying to find, say, Iron Valiant, I can also find the other version of the Paradox Pokemon, the Scarlet version, because I'm in multiplayer with another. So if you do have a friend who has the other version, it's extremely effective to do this together in the same lobby, in the same game, so you can capture all 14 in one go. Worst case too, if you are struggling to find, say, one of them, your friend found it, then you can just trade each other, no problem. Lastly, from Research Center 4, the busted up, beat up one, we have one more Pokemon you probably want to know about. You are actually able to capture a second version of your legendary Pokemon. So I'm currently riding Maridon, who is now available in combat mode. I am able to use its battle form as we enter the post game. But if you played the story, you know there's a second one in the story. You can fight and capture that one. This means you can actually get the other legendary Pokemon by trading with other players or a friend. So from Research Lab 4, what you want to do is go to the cliff edge and jump off. And we've landed this pretty well, actually. Jumping straight off the side here, you can have this sort of bridge that leads up and at the top of that bridge is the legendary Pokemon of your version, the second one. It's not exactly a crazy fight and you can capture it through normal means. You do not need to use a master ball like you see in the story being used to capture it, but it exists here. You can fight it and you can capture it. And that means you'll have a second version you can trade with other players, such as a friend to get their legendary Pokemon and you can give your second one to them. With that, you now have the locations of all seven iron types. And technically, if you are playing the Scarlet version, the locations of your versions too. As you can see, they're roughly between level 50 and 60 at the point that you'll fight them and capture them. And in my opinion, Iron Valiant is clearly the strongest of the Iron types. As a fairy and fighter, it's got really high damage and so many options for the moves themselves that you're able to actually get super damage on most targets that you fight. Overall, it's great against normal, fighting, rock, ice, dragon, and dark types. So it covers a lot of bases. Roar Moon, which is essentially the comparison to the Iron Valiant, is much the same. Very powerful, covering a lot of bases, and with really high damage. For the others, we have Iron Thorn, which is a rock electric type, which I think is generally solid. We have Iron Thorns, ground and steel, again, very good. Iron Jugulus is dark and flying, which is a reasonably good pick. Iron Moth is fire and poison. Iron Bundle is ice and water, which is also really good. But lastly, Iron Hansir is a fighting electric type. So overall, this new generation of Paradox Pokemon in the Iron type, I do think are very solid across the board, with Iron Valiant being standout. While I'm here, I should probably include the Scarlet versions just so you know their names and what to look for. Roaring Moon is the best one in my opinion, the comparison to Iron Valiant. But then we have Brute Bonnet, we have Screamtail, we have Sliverwing, we have Sandy Shocks, we have Fluttermane, and the one missing here that I've not got in my party because I can't have a party of seven is Great Tusk. What's interesting about these opposite versions versions is that they don't accurately reflect the other version. They're not the same types at all. Root Bonnet is a Grass Dark. We have Scream Tail, which is a Fairy Psychic. So the Wing is your Bug Fighting. Sandy Shocks is your Electric Ground. And Fluttermane is your Ghost Fairy, with Roaring Moon being Dragon and Dark. As well as my off-screen at this time, Great Tusk, which is Ground and Fighting. I find that the Scarlet versions have a lot of reoccurring types, which is a bit strange. Maybe the Violet versions are more varied. But there you have it. That is my guide to the location of the new Violet types and Paradox Pokemon in general. If you have any more thoughts on the Pokemon, their strengths and just general details, then drop it in the comments. But otherwise, I hope this video helped you. Until next time then, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye